Hey you guys, what's up? This is Anime Blaze coming to you with another video. Now I wonder, I bet you're wondering, why am I so far away? Well, uh, that's, uh, that is sort of a long, long story. But I'll tell that later whenever I do a live stream or whatever. So let's get started with the video. Alright, so uh, about a week or so ago, uh, you know, everybody's, oh, as far as I know, a lot of people have been going out and getting a lot of Bandai releases since, well, you know, everybody knows, Bandai's going out of business, oh no, but yeah, Bandai's going out of business, and one of the shows that I had on my list of animes that I had, I guess out of all of the animes that I had on the list of shows that I wanted to get from Bandai. This one was probably the second most show that I wanted the most. Second or third. Uh, so I went out and got Sola. Uh, and if you haven't seen in the corner, let's go a little bit closer here. Uh, right there. Bandai. Anime Legends. And I bet you guys are wondering, well, Anime Legends, well, I've heard of that. Oh, why haven't I heard of the show? Well, it's because it's been buried underneath the crap load of Gundam that Bandai has, which I'll also be wondering who's going to release that. But right now, this show is like very, very underrated from what I can tell. Three episodes in, and I've gotten a lot of different vibes from just those three episodes, but it's been pretty enjoyable. So let me just give you a few aspects of this show. Uh, genres, drama, fantasy, romance, and tragedy. Well, to fit those vibes, I kind of went and picked out let me see, three different anime shows from my collection of which I feel I felt kind of fit that kind of, uh, those kind of stories, I guess, I mean, genres. So, uh, but before I get with that, let's get with the uh, storyline. Storyline, you know, we've got this guy named uh, Yorito uh, Mori Mia, and he's pretty much, I guess you could say, your run-of-the-mill high school guy, but from what I can tell, he's kind of like an aspiring uh, photographer. He goes about taking pictures of the sky, uh, why he does so, uh, I don't know, but he probably has his reasons for doing that. They'll probably explain that later on in the series. But, yeah, he has his own reasons for wanting to do that. And, uh, you know, one night he goes out and he plans on taking a picture of the night, uh, turning from night to day, but he meets a girl It's like kicking a vending machine. You know, it's kind of strange. And her... Her ways, her ways to uh, fix anything technological is to kick it. Yeah, but you know he asks her. You know he talks to her for a little bit. She kind of disappears, and you know her name is. Uh, he finds out her name is Matsuri, and uh, you know she tells him. You know he later finds out after a, a battle. Yeah, I said battle, a fight. So there was a sword involved. I'll get into that with the whole genres. Uh, she explains to him that she is a yaka, who is, uh, which is pretty much uh, what they describe as an immortal, ageless existence, uh, also known as the calamity of the night, and she's lived uh, hundreds of years alone in the darkness of night. Now, to me, that kind of sounds like, uh, I guess, a little bit generic, but not really. Once you actually start watching the show, you kind of feel for her character. Of, uh, it's it's hard to put. In a way, her character is. She longs to see the sunlight. I mean, yeah, you get that part, but it's kind of like you want to say. Like your immediate reaction might be, well, she's just complaining, you know, just because she can only come out during the night, you know, forget the day, she's just complaining. But on the other hand, she's not actually complaining. She's just saying, you know, 
she even stated in the show, you know, I've lived, it's, it's funny, isn't it? I've lived thousands of years, yet I've never seen what, what the actual sky looks like. Because she's been hunted her whole, well, one, she's been hunted uh, by these guys who apparently, well, the guy who apparently wants to kill her. I don't know why. She, she seems like a normal, normal kind of character. Uh, nothing actually stands out about her that makes her appear dangerous. So uh, apparently there's some kind of danger about her for this guy to want to kill her. I'll explain. I'll talk about him later on due to the genres. But yeah, she seems pretty much normal. And you can kind of feel for a character that longs to see the sunlight. You know, something they've never seen before in their life. And they've lived for thousands of years in the darkness, never actually becoming friends really with anybody, having little to no contact with actual people. She's not human, by the way, but she looks human. Um, you know, you can only imagine how that would feel. Uh, I definitely feel for her. So for, even, even if I'm only three episodes in and I don't know the whole story, but I will definitely be doing a review on this show because it is extremely underrated. Now for the connections to the show, the first few vibes of the show that I got just from watching it. Alright, so, like I said, one of the genres was romance. So, you know, what better, John, what better, uh, I guess, show to pick, I mean, out of my collection of romance, and I don't even actually have that too many romance animes, but yeah, what better show to pick than something like Air the Motion Picture? I kind of zoom in a little bit. Right there, yeah. What better show to pick than Air the Motion Picture? That show was very tragic, heartwarming. Well, no, not heartwarming, heartbreaking, <laughs> if anything. But yeah, you know, you got that. And, you know, like I said, there was tragedy. And I figured, I didn't know what other show to pick in my collection. It was either this or uh, a Portrait de Petit Cosette, which probably would have fit this situation better, but I just kind of picked. So I picked Higurashi for the whole tragedy feeling. Now, I haven't actually gotten into the whole tragedy aspect of the show yet, but something tells me that things are going to get really, really, like, I guess really, really. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, tragic. Uh, I, I guess that's the best word I can use. Tragic. Things are going to get really, really emotional, really, really soon. Something tells me that. Uh, I've heard a lot of stuff about the show. Something tells me I. I someone tells me. Now, uh, I'm gonna. The last show I picked was about was over the hunter guy. I don't know his name because I don't even think they've actually said his name yet. I mean, there's a, a girl he's with, but I don't know. I'm just going to try to give you guys basically what I've learned from just watching the first three episodes. This guy, apparently, I don't know if he's been hunting Yaka his whole life or if he's been alive for thousands of years hunting Yaka, which I doubt. This isn't... Yeah... But, you know, I doubt that, but he's hunting Yaka, and maybe he has his reasons for wanting to hunt Matsuri, but I don't know. But to me, he seems like, uh, he seems like he wants to be a trusting guy, like, you know, he seems to be sort of trustworthy, but he seems to be caring for uh, a girl along the way in the show. And he seems to want to be, like, high, I mean, I think it was episode two, where they kind of continued the fight from episode one, where he wanted to hide the fact that he was hunting. You know, he saw the girl walking up the stairs because she heard the noise, and he tucked his, uh, his sword in his jacket. Now, I don't know about you, but this could mean a few, one of a few things. One you know, she's just a young girl, you know, he doesn't want her to know what he does. Two, this is my like, strongest, strongest opinion about what the situation might be. Two, she's a Yaka also, 
but he has sort of his reasons for wanting to protect her and care for her and stuff like that and keep this hidden from her because if she knew that he was hunting Yaka she probably wouldn't want to be around him anymore and you know that's understandable I'm pretty sure I'm right about the sec number two I'm pretty sure I'm right but who knows? I haven't finished watching the show. I'll probably confirm my suspicions later on. But something about this guy. It seems like he wants to protect the girl. He wants to... It seems like he has his own reasons for wanting to hunt the Yaka. But at the same time, he wants to hide... He's hiding something from the girl that we as the audience and the girl don't know. Uh, so we, I'm really looking forward to see what his little secret is. Um, but yeah, hunting, the whole aspect of that, people are creatures that can only come out during the night, vampires, maybe, but someone hunting something that can only come out during the night, I know no better anime or Marvel related thing to choose than, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Blade. I got this whole aspect of it from episode two. You would not believe. It's 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 hard to believe, but yeah, it's the whole vibe I got. This guy had. I mean, you wouldn't believe. I just saw the guy just standing there. You know, he's walking. You know, no, 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 no. The main character of the show busts through the doors of the church, and she, he's sitting there with a sword in his hand. I'm like, what? And then. <laughs> He starts like running around chasing the girl, like trying to kill her, throws like some darts that shoot out like some giant beams of light that you know, they explode into giant beams of light or something. And I'm just like, Blade? <laughs> but yeah, that's that's just the whole aspect I've got of it. It's, uh, it's crazy, I know, but it's probably going to get better. I, I doubt that it won't, but yeah. Let me just show you really, really quickly what is in the DVDs, and I'll be out of your hair for this first impressions. Like I said, this is the complete series, and uh, the show had a total of 13 episodes and two OVAs. So, let me take a look here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but yeah, 15 episodes total, uh, which means that they actually had 13 episodes, and they added the two OVAs on, which... In case the price that you pay to get the show is actually worth it, uh, not that much. I mean, I paid what thirty, but that's because that's the only one they had. I'm pretty sure now they have it a little bit cheaper, but definitely, definitely worth watching. Check it out. Watch Sola. Watch the first episode and tell me in the description what you guys think. Even you know, let me just say this. Hold on. Let me just say this. Even if you guys aren't a fan of the whole romance genre, I, I, I understand. I don't watch too much of the romance genre either, but from what I can tell, it has a lot to offer. So definitely in your spare time, if you have the chance, watch at least the first episode. Just, you know, just the first episode. I'm not watching, I'm not asking you to watch the entire series. No, no. I'm going to at least ask you guys to watch the first episode. Just tell me what you think. Matter of fact, here I got an idea. You, we're gonna do a little, I guess, discussion. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm gonna make this into an idea. Okay. Um, if you guys are actually interested uh, in checking out the show, try watching the first episode, and I'll probably do uh, blog TV or something over it. Most likely, just to see who's interested, you know, we can discuss different parts about it. I'm really interested. I want to try something new, so I'm going for it. All right, this is the Anime Blaze. Never doubt your capabilities because you never know what you might be able to do. Trust me, it works. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Have a nice day, and uh, I'll see you later.